what's poppin it's your girl jazzy j how y'all doing today welcome to my channel if you are new around here welcome if not what is up buttercup today is thursday and for those who don't know i like to do a little thing on here actually i don't actually have a name for this segment if y'all have a name for the segment go ahead i just call it hair tips darling and that's bada bing bada boom uh, it's pretty simple pretty easy okay anyway i am part of a natural hair group on facebook i'm not going to name it i'm not going to name any names um, it is based off of another YouTuber's following, and I originally joined for, you know, of course, hair tips. And I've noticed that one of the things that I find to be an issue is that people still want to jump onto the bandwagon of different trends that are up and around. I know when I first started watching natural YouTubers, they talked about different trends that people would jump onto. For example, coconut oil. That was a big thing. A lot of uh, a lot of people said that coconut oil is great for your hair. So everybody jumped onto coconut oil. And then it was shea butter and everybody jumped onto shea butter. And these YouTubers, not a lot of them, just a few of them, say, it's not for everyone. It's not, okay? And just because a whole bunch of people say that it works doesn't mean it actually works. It could just be a ploy to get money. That being said, a whole new slew of, hmm, I guess, procedures or ingredients, ingredients have popped up and everybody is just jumping on board and when I voiced my opinion to say that's not for everyone, especially not for me, I tried it, it dried out my hair, somebody's response was to say, well, you're probably not doing it right. It works for everybody. You need to do it this way. You need to do it that way. Da 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 da. I didn't even respond. I'm not gonna give that type of energy the type of day, but you don't know me don't know my hair you don't know if I'm a real person I don't know if you're a real person you don't know what works for my hair you don't know the struggle that's been going on with my hair you don't know how long it is you don't know what porosity it is you don't know the curl texture of what it is you don't know anything about my hair yet you have the audacity to tell me something like that stop it stop let me peep y'all on something. Big trends right now. Fermented rice water. Super big thing right now. All right. Tea rinses, super big thing. Henna, hair glosses, super big thing. Ayurveda, super big thing. Okay, it is. Now, as a whole, it is good for you, especially to go in and research and do things that are good for your hair. It is most important that you listen to your hair more than anybody else. If you see another YouTuber, even me, talking about Ayurvedic herbs, I try to keep it as unbiased as possible. Granted, it does become a little bit boring and I'm going to try to change that so it's a little bit more interesting and entertaining, but... Just because something works for somebody doesn't mean it's going to work for you and you have no right to tell anybody else that what they are doing for their hair is wrong and you have no reason to accept that energy from anybody else either, okay? Rice water is very high in protein. I have low porosity hair. There are some women and some men out there who have very low porosity hair where if they even think about using protein their hair dries out and then it breaks off and it falls off protein treatments are meant for high porosity hair because protein pretty sure i've said this before can't remember protein is meant to fill in the gaps in your hair follicle if there are no gaps to fill in or 
there is a very small amount of gaps, like low porosity hair, and you fill them in, and there is no way for moisture to enter your hair, you're not helping your hair. You're damaging your hair. Same goes with fenugreek. I talked about fenugreek before. I happened to love fenugreek, but I noticed as time went on that it wasn't my thing anymore. Like occasionally I can use it as like a, a steaming treatment or something like that. But in the end, it's not for me because fenugreek is high in protein. Instead, I like things like sweet potatoes, great for my hair. Aloe vera, great for my hair. Marshmallow root, slippery elm, uh, kelp, kelp powder is another one. Different things like that are all great for my hair. My hair needs moisture. It doesn't need protein. It's got plenty of protein, plenty of keratin. You don't, if you don't need keratin treatments, don't get keratin treatments. If you're low porosity, stay away from protein, okay? Just stay away from protein. If you're high porosity, get protein. Because the, the reason why I say this, and it's very, very important, is there is this thing called protein overload. And essentially, protein overload is when your hair has so much protein in it that it actually, like, in a sense, locks up and it just frizzes and then it breaks and falls off and you have extreme, extreme hair loss. And it is very, very hard to get out of that besides just cutting it off and starting over. That's why it's very, very important for you guys to listen to your hair, listen to your body. You want a sure way to make sure that your hair grows and that it is healthy, first of all, stop worrying about length, okay? Healthy hair will grow long, it will. The most important thing, the most important thing about your hair is its health, okay? There is no reason why you would sacrifice healthy hair for hair that is down your back, but is dry enough that it can start a miniature brush fire. Because in the end, that long hair that can start a miniature brush fire, guess what? If you don't cut it off, it's gonna fall off. Healthy hair is far, far more important. You're gonna be happier anyway. And, and if you let your hair be healthy, it will probably grow longer than what it was damaged. Hmm? You think about that? That's a thing. If you let your hair be healthy, it will grow longer than it was damaged. It, it makes, well at least to me, it logically makes sense. If your hair grows down your back, damaged and broken, don't you think it makes sense that if it's healthy and moisturized, it would easily grow twice that length to the back of your knees? I mean, is it gonna work like that every single time? Probably not. But that's the most logical way to think about it. I mean, I'm just saying. I could be wrong, but I'm just saying. Also, there's a lot of ingredients to put on your hair. A lot. But there are a few key things that will always and forever work in growing your hair. Number one, I don't know why I'm holding up my pinky. Number one, drink water, okay? This water bottle, I'm gonna turn it around. Oh my gosh, not doing any sponsoring. This water bottle was given to me by my brother because he gave, he got another one. It is two liters of water, two liters. It is great. You can probably get something like this off of Amazon. Um, you can just Google two liter of water bottles or maybe bigger water bottles or something like it, just water. If you want to mix it up, I like to do a little bit of lemon juice uh, during the summertime. Cucumber water with a little lemon, strawberry water, orange water. 
just some little citrusy water things here and there. Super great. Okay. Number two in making sure that your hair grows healthy. Eat properly. And I'm not going to try to be nice about that. I don't understand, at least for Americans, I don't understand why you think your hair is going to grow an immense amount and all you do is consume fast food, chips, junk food, sweets, sugar, fat, carbs, oil, maybe not like carbs, but like if all you're doing is consuming things that have no nutritional value, then guess what? It's not going to work. Now, that being said, I'm not going to try and play dumb and say that well, everybody has the opportunity to go out and buy fruits and vegetables and healthy things. I understand that there is a large disparity in uh, ethnic groups and where people grow up and <sighs> redlining and politics and a lot of systemic racism and things like that. I'm not going to try to ignore any of that and I understand that it's very, very hard for some people to get proper nutrients, fruits and vegetables and lean meats, maybe like chicken or turkey or just getting fresh water can be very difficult for somebody. I'm not going to ever tell them like you need to eat healthy, just survive. If you're in that type of situation, just survive, okay? Take care of yourself. But for those who are not in that situation, and those that have the money to go out and buy fresh fruits and vegetables or grow it, those that have the money to go out and get fresh water and are able to have a healthier lifestyle, what is wrong with you that you are not doing that? You don't have to like a whole bunch of vegetables. I understand that people, some people don't like green beans. They don't like carrots. They don't like peppers or onions or mushrooms or whatever, okay? But you need them. And if you don't like something, like broccoli, fine. Or you don't like sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are high in vitamin A. Guess what? There are supplements that you can take to give your body the missing vitamins and minerals that you need. Get them, take them. You don't need a doctor to tell you to take supplements. If you feel you are lacking something, get multivitamins. I know there are things that are like hair, skin, and nails for women, hair, skin, and nails for men, I mean, I guess. You, could, you get the, um, you kids have the, uh, you remember the little Flintstone vitamins that we used to eat as kids growing up? You got them for adults. Or go ahead and get the Flintstone vitamins. You got the gummy multivitamins. You got, there are so many multivitamins out there if you don't like eating fruits and vegetables that your body can use and will help your hair. Just, I don't know how much more I can stress that. If you want to have a healthy lifestyle, you need to eat healthy. Having junk food every so often is fine, but if your main food source is not healthy food, you're not going to be healthy. You're not. I don't care if you do workout. Leading into my next point, number three, working out. A lot of you guys think working out is a chore. It is not. It's not, okay? And there are a lot of people that are probably going to say, well, it is for me. No, it's not. Your body likes working out. If anything, it is a reward to your body to work out. You are telling your body, this is what I can do. I am strong. I am flexible. I do have high endurance. And I'm going to reward my body and I'm going to treat my body and I'm going to work out. It doesn't have to be one hour, two hour, three hour long workouts. God, no. No. If you are just starting out, 30 minutes, tops, 30 minutes, you are good. Go in to the gym. You don't even have to go to the gym. Just stay at home because I'm definitely going to be making some workout videos. 
I've already made one. I don't. I haven't posted it yet, but I'll be posting it soon. Pick a body part that you're gonna do. Legs, butt, back, abs, arms, whatever else. Say, okay, I today am going to do leg exercises. Do a five minute cardio workout, whether it's dancing, jump roping, jogging, elliptical, jumping jacks, done. Five minutes, knock it out. Do 20 minutes of just leg exercises with no distractions and 10 second rest in between each one. Do two sets of 10 frog jumps, two sets of 10 uh, mountain climbers, two sets of 10 squats, two sets of 10 uh, something else. Make a whole list, okay? And then at the end, the last five minutes, stretch. Just do some simple cool down stretching. Guess what? 30 minutes, you're done. You're done, okay? It's not hard. You don't have to push yourself. You're not trying to look like a bodybuilder. You're just giving yourself, or I guess rewarding yourself with the notion that you're alive, that you're capable of doing these things that everybody else is able to do as well. I I don't know. Maybe that's the way that I think. Maybe y'all are just like, I'm not ever gonna do that. Okay, fine. Don't. But it's very good for you. It's going to help you a lot. And as time goes on and you get used to working out, probably going to find it to be an enjoyable thing for you to do. You don't have to beat yourself up. That's not what working out's about. It's about you releasing energy and feeling good afterwards. Whatever. I've said my piece on that. The last thing and the most important thing about anybody and it is very very hard this year in 2020. Maybe it'll be easier as time goes on, but the most important thing is trying to be stress-free. And again, it is 2020. We have had a lot happen. A lot. A lot of famous people have died. This pandemic has been a hell of a thing. Um, some of y'all probably don't remember. We, we had the, uh, the killer bees. That was a thing. I'm pretty sure they were the big old... Uh, pretty sure... Oh, right. Australia was on fire. That was a thing. That was definitely a thing. Um, I'm pretty sure we had quite a few natural disasters happen besides California being on California God not California Australia besides Australia being on fire uh, we've had quite a lot of other things that have happened um, it's hard to live stress-free as an adult as an adult in 2020 as a child as a person who has to change their entire way of life, teaching in person to now teaching online, doing things in person to now doing everything online, and God, health workers, uh, the amount of stress that they're going through every single day is immense. It really is. And again, I hope it gets better in the coming years that the stress level of the country just dies down but as much as possible try to find forms of release for me it's video games 
I love video games. I am a gamer. Hopefully one day I will be able to set up a Twitch and play different games. I do all sorts of things. I've played Blade and Soul, I've played Genshin Impact, I like uh, Minecraft, hopefully one day I can get the Switch and play Breath of Wild. I've played, of course, different Zelda games. Zelda is my absolute favorite. Any Mario games, love them. Uh, Need for Speed, Sonic the Hedgehog, gosh, I love Sonic. My favorite character is Shadow. I'm getting completely off topic here. But if your stress relief is video games like me, play some video games. If your stress relief is drawing, draw. If your stress relief is gardening, do some gardening. If you don't have a hobby, get a hobby. Find something. There's so many things out there in the world for you to do to just help you escape reality just for a little bit. Even if it's something as simple as sleeping, I highly, highly suggest you don't stress eat. Um, but that's just a personal thing. Anything else is fine. Don't stress drink either. That's even worse. Don't stress do drugs. That's also terrible. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do besides eating yourself to death, drinking yourself to death, and literally doing drugs to death. So find what you can to do to stay stress free. Okay, not stress free, it's very hard, but to stay as stressed as possible. I guess we're gonna go with that. As little stressed as possible. Those are the four things that I highly suggest. Those are actually, those are the four things that are actually going to work in helping your hair to grow. Anything else, of course, is extra. Um, another thing that I really wanted to point out before I end this video. Anything and everything that you use is meant to encourage your hair to grow. It is not going to miraculously make your hair grow, okay? Your hair will grow at the pace that it wants to grow. No faster, no slower. That's it. If you have an issue, take it up with your hair, okay? Things like rice water, kind of Greek henna, hair glosses, anything like that that is meant to make your hair grow and it's supposed to make your hair grow 12 inches in one month. First of all, they're lying. They're lying. Okay? Uh, second of all, all it does is encourage. It's not a miracle treatment. And for every single person, it's different. Just because it works for them doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So don't buy into every single thing. Take the time, do the research, figure out what your hair likes, figure out what your hair doesn't like. And I guarantee you, you're probably gonna find something where if everybody else doesn't like this one thing, your hair loves it. Loves it, soaks it up, and it's just growing miraculously and flawless. But don't for a second think that just because it works for you, it's gonna work for everybody else, all right? That's all I have for you guys today. It was a bit more of a ranty style, but I really wanted to get that off of my chest so that you guys aren't going into the upcoming years just completely blind. If you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Uh, go ahead and drop a comment down below if you have any other suggestions or you wanna see certain videos. Turn the bell on so that you know when I post another video, and I will see you guys later. Bye.